Hey guys, welcome back to Trek on the Tube and welcome back to another Star Trek races. I know, I know, I haven't done one of these in, in forever. I'm, I'm so excited. Okay, if you know about this channel and you've already seen some of my videos, then you probably already know this, but I'd like to repeat it anyway before we begin. These videos are primarily made for new Star Trek fans, which means I try to keep things simple, I try to keep things short, I try to not spoil too much, and of course, there might be some elements I don't talk about. Please keep that in mind while watching and commenting. Alright, so there you go. Let's get started. Star Trek races, Romulans. First appearing on the original series, they are distant cousins of the Vulcans. What I mean is, during the 4th century human calendar, Vulcan was going through something called the Time of Awakening. You see, Vulcans were originally a very emotional people, quite extreme in the expression of their emotions, actually. Very violent, very passionate, more so than us, even. Now, all of this extreme eventually led to ongoing, devastating wars, and when the planet was on the brink of total annihilation, a visionary arose, the one and only Surak, a spiritual leader of sorts that set out to teach all Vulcans who would listen to suppress and control their emotions, thus in a way creating the Vulcan society we have come to know. Now not all Vulcans accepted Surak's ideals. A group of isolationists, described as those who march under the raptor's wings, refused the new ways and decided to leave Vulcan. They set out to found their own society elsewhere, far away from Vulcan and its newfound philosophies. Now what did the Romulans have to do with all of this? Well, it's their ancient ancestors that are the ones that refuse the teachings of Surak. The ancient ancestors of the Romulans are indeed those very Vulcans who left Vulcan over a thousand years ago. And so, Romulans and Vulcans are cousins. Of course, from then on, both civilizations evolved quite differently. Generally described as a xenophobic, racist, militaristic people, the only real common personality trait Romulans still share with the Vulcans today are their condescending attitudes and sense of superiority towards basically anyone else. Romulans always look like they think they're the smartest ones in the room, and so do Vulcans. To be honest. The Romulans as we know them today, however, as obnoxious as they are, aren't necessarily bent on conquest or expansion, even if they do invest a lot of resources in the protection of their territory and borders. Romulans try to avoid open conflict, it's it's not their style. Often described as devious or duplicitous, Romulans prefer to manipulate others or play the waiting game. Watch events unfold from afar, placing spies in other governments if they can. I mean, regarding humans in particular, the Romulans already knew a lot about them before humans ever even knew that Romulans existed. This is because Romulan spies were working on Vulcan at one time, and the Vulcans were working in close relation with the humans. It would seem that Romulans are most comfortable with this kind of situation. They really enjoy having the upper hand. Humans only became aware of Romulans in the 2150s when they encountered one of their minefields, but even then, it took at least another century before the Romulans would actually initiate visual first contact with a human ship. And frankly, that's how they treat a lot of their relations, with a sort of cold, reluctance. None of this means they would always back down from an open conflict, mind you. After one misunderstanding with the Vulcans, in part caused by a member of the Q Continuum, a terrible war erupted, later known as the Hundred Year War, and a very short-lived alliance with the Klingons soured their relationships for centuries. Romulans really do seem to hold a grudge, and I mean, if it is necessary, they, they will fight you. Biologically, these instigators of conflict between others <laughs> are, as you would expect, quite similar to Vulcans. They have pointed ears, they have the pointed brow, the copper-based green blood, and a similar variety of skin pigmentations. However, the two races do have many subtle internal physiological differences, including a grey heart for the Romulans, which means they are distinguishable by starship scanners. Not only that, but many Romulans also have one external physical feature that no Vulcan we've seen on screen to date has, a V-shaped ridge on their forehead. It's interesting to note that we have seen flat forehead Vulcans posing as Romulans interact with ridged forehead Romulans without anyone mentioning anything. So, it's pretty safe to assume that both ethnicities are common and do coexist. Now what you gotta understand is when the Romulans were created and shown on screen for the first time back in the 60s on the original series, their makeup was identical to the Vulcans. The objective was to not only surprise the audience, but also create a narrative around this resemblance. This was a cornerstone for the backstory we talked about earlier. It was years later, with the arrival of the next generation, that like many, many other Star Trek races, the Romulans received a aesthetic update. In case you're wondering, there is no official canon explanation as to how or why both 
ethnicities exist. Although there are some unofficial theories out there brought to us either by people involved with the production of Star Trek or an older version of Star Trek.com itself. I don't want to dive too deep into this, but one theory is that the Romanins used to mutilate themselves, scarify themselves, and that eventually made its way into the gene pool, effectively altering their DNA. The other theory, my preferred theory, is that there simply were two races living on Vulcan so many centuries ago, or ethnicity, however you want to put it. And it just so happens that most of the ridged forehead people left Vulcan, whereas most of the flat forehead people stayed. Funny thing is, these flat forehead Romulans continued to be shown on screen both throughout the animated series and the original series movies. Now keep in mind that two of these movies came out after the next generation begun, which means someone somewhere made a conscious decision to revert back to the original Romanin design when those movies came out. Maybe indeed trying to imply a sort of evolution over time. Although, from that point on, with the exception of those two movies and Star Trek 09, all of the Romulans ever shown on screen had the V-shaped ridge on their foreheads, even in Enterprise, the prequel to the original series. Alright, going back to who they are rather than what they look like. As I said before, they were very militaristic people, often driven and motivated by personal honor and a sense of loyalty to their Roman and Star Empire, preferring death over disgrace and having military and political rank influence social standing, you would most likely find any Romulan you meet to be quite focused and career driven. They were very hard people, a very cold people, with families said to even dispose of newborns just because they have birth defects. I know. And I mean, even their written language seems strict. Look at it, it's full of square letters and sharp edges. Now little to nothing is known about their previous governing bodies or monarchies, except that they were led by an empress at some point. Today, however, the Romulan Star Empire is run by the Romulan Imperial Senate, headed by the Praetor, followed by the Proconsul, the Vice Proconsul, and finally the Senators. These people are the ones who make the big decisions. There's also something called the Continuing Committee in the Romulan political structure, also headed by the Praetor, but this time, comprised of not only senators, but also high-ranking officials, such as the chairman of the Tel Shiar. More on them in just a minute. The Roman Star Empire is basically a totalitarian regime, with many, many practices still in use today that seem quite outdated for such an advanced species. I'm talking the death penalty, slavery, a caste system, which all brings us to, as I mentioned before, the Tel Shiar. This is the elite intelligence agency of the Romulan Empire. Much like Section 31, it is dangerous, it is powerful, it has influence across quadrants, and it is feared. Unlike Section 31, however, it doesn't work in the shadows. The organization and its agents go around kidnapping, torturing, assassinating everyone they need, alien or Romulan, with the hopes of maintaining order. And this with no shame whatsoever. Believe me, these guys, these guys don't mess around. The worst thing is, the government relies on them greatly, be it with the military or civilians, even if the Tel Shiar have been known to, at times, act without any previous Senate accord. Side note, the Tel Shiar are technically higher in rank than the military, so they can basically take control of any ship or refocus any military mission at any given time. As you would expect, both the military and civilians live in fear of this organization. The constant oppression and anxiety the Romulan people go through might actually be part of the reason why they're so distrustful and defensive. It could also explain why they have such terrible relations with other races. It could also explain why a growing number of Romulans are now part of what is unofficially called the Reunification Movement. Founded in the 24th century, it's a group of Romulans that seek to reunify themselves with their long-lost cousins the Vulcans, make peace and uh, combine cultures. Now, considering these guys are primarily used as villains in the franchise, we've never really taken the time to focus on their society and culture. Sure, the famous Romulan Ale pops up quite often through the years, but other than that, we really don't know much about what they do for fun, what kind of art they create, what's trending for them at any given moment. Fashion doesn't really seem to affect them. I mean, each era of Star Trek brought us a new Romulan costume design and haircut, and then stuck to them for each and every Romulan they featured, but that's more or less due Due to the production limitations and the way television was made at the time. Although everyone having similar clothing and haircuts could be interpreted as a symptom of their very strict regime. 
One thing we do learn is Romulans often use temporary tattoos to express their grief, and they will mourn their dead for as long as the tattoos are visible. Nero, the big bad from Star Trek 09, sports some intense facial tattoos because he mourns the destruction of Romulus itself and the death of billions of Romulans. Of course, he did things a bit differently. He made his tattoos permanent because he believed that he would mourn this great loss until the end of his days. Yeah, I did say the destruction of Romulus itself, and I will get to that. But first, we have two more things to talk about, Romulan technology and the Remans. Romulan technology is advanced and unique. They are the first known species to have developed cloaking technology. Before that, they even had what they called multispectral emitters, which was another form of camouflage. It was basically a whole lot of holographic emitters placed around the hull of a ship or a drone ship that enabled them to change the appearance of the vessel. They also have very powerful site-to-site -site communicators, which are unaffected by shields, and they have scientists actively working on cybernetics as well as biogenic weapons. Weapons. They also have powerful handheld and ship-mounted firepower. Pretty scary, if you ask me, but it's not all about weaponry. Romanians are ingenious and creative in their problem-solving regardless of the field. For example, for example, they didn't use the traditional antimatter matter dilithium crystal technology for their warp drives like almost every other species in the galaxy. No, the Romanians developed an entirely different way of generating warp fields. They create what one calls an artificial quantum singularity, and they pull the energy they need from that. You can do your own research on this stuff if you want, but it's, it's basically a black hole that they're harnessing. I mean, honestly. God damn, risky stuff, scary stuff. Their ships are equally as interesting, though maybe not as unique, considering they seem to, for the most part, stick with wing designs and a green color scheme, just like the Klingons. I'll be throwing some various ship types on screen now for you to check out. This, by the way, is the Dideridex class, and it is one of my all-time favorite Star Trek ships. The Remans, aha, the Remans. Now, I'm not gonna talk about these guys too much, because this is a Romulan Star Trek races video, but uh, like omitting the Remans would be completely ridiculous. So we do need to touch on them just a bit. Long story short, when those who marched under the raptor's wings left Vulcan and embarked on their long journey so many centuries ago, they set out to find a new homeworld, and they did. The Romulan homeworld known today as Romulus. But the planet had a sister planet, a dark and inhospitable place on which lived an indigenous species, a people we now know today as the Remans. Suffice to say, their presence didn't stop the Romulans from establishing themselves next door, quite the contrary in fact, as it turns out the Romulans enslaved Remans. They used them in the minds of Remus and treated them as nothing more than a sort of sub-people, according them no rights and no say. As you can see, this ties back to what we were talking about earlier. The Romulans still have these barbaric, outdated systems in place. They use a caste system and the Remans were on the bad side of that. They were on the bad end. So Romulans still, to this day, have slaves. Or, or do they? I ask if they do because <laughs> here it is. The one final thing I have to talk about, the destruction of Romulus. And listen, I know this is technically something huge to go over and many would count it as a major spoiler, but it's so important to the Romulan story and, and so mainstream a fact since it's quite literally the event that set Star Trek 09 in motion, that I think, I think we can talk about it. In 2387, the Hubbus star went supernova and destroyed Romulus, killing its estimated 18 billion inhabitants. Now, the Romulan star empire is a big place, and there are plenty of other planets inhabited, controlled, colonized by Romulans, so who knows what happened after that. That reunification we talked about earlier seems like a good idea, right? Regarding the Remans, we, we don't know if there were any others on any other planets, but we can assume that the majority of their population was indeed situated on Remus. If that's the case, they're probably all dead. Because even if Star Trek 09 never mentions Remus, it was Romulus' sister planet. If one planet was vaporized, then the other one would be as well. So maybe there's no more slaves, maybe there's no more Remans, or very few. All right, there you go. That's it. Those are the Romulans. I hope you learned a few things. I hope this helps you prepare for the upcoming Star Trek Picard in which there seems to be a lot of Romulans. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, share with your friends, leave a comment telling me what race you want me to cover next because I do have a list that I update with all of your requests. And uh, in uh, Romulan tradition, Jolan Troop.